If you're a gym owner and you wanna scale, in this video, I'm gonna walk through how I scaled from 33 members to over 250 members in eight short months and exactly how I reverse engineered and planned out every step of the way. My name is Kale Owen. I am the CEO of Gym Launch and Prestige Labs, and I used to own a gym. I was a gym owner. I was a partner in one gym, and then the next gym that I owned, I built and scaled it using the systems inside Gym Launch to go from 33 members to over 250 in eight months. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how my wife and I, who worked with me in the business, reverse engineered the entire steps. Everything from how many leads we needed to get on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, how many sales we needed to make, how many conversions on trials we needed to make, how many people we needed to hire, everything. So let me give you a little backstory. This gym that I owned back in April of 2017, right before I signed up with Gym Launch, I was eight weeks away from shutting my doors. I was losing members. I was focused on something else. I'd even gone out and gotten a nine to five job working for a local advertising agency to sell for them so that I could put food on the table for my wife, myself, and our then one-year-old daughter. Then I found out in April that my wife, she was pregnant with our second, and we were expecting our second in late January. So anyways, I signed up for Gym Launch in late April, and I did it because I wanted to build my facility and ultimately sell it, which I did, but that's another story. So signed up, we had 33 members when we did, implemented the systems, and the first 10 days we added 75 new challenge members. So they're not EFT members, not reoccurring members, they're challenge members, meaning they signed up for six weeks. So I still had to convert them and do that. But signed up 75 people at $500 a piece, made a lot of money, which was amazing and helped us be able to scale. But that's just a quick thing. What we have to do is convert those people into long-term members, and then we need to continue to do that to scale it. We did that, we converted like 70% of those 75 members into long-term memberships, which was great. We more than doubled our facility. It was fantastic. Fast forward to August. August, I went to the very first mastermind for Gym Lords and Alex Hermosi, Layla Hermosi ran this. It was a small event. I think there was like 20, 25 people in the room. All some of the first people to join Legacy, which was at the time Gym Launch's next program. It was a year long membership and mastermind group. We were there and it was the very first Gym Lord Summit that we had. And Alex walked through a couple different presentations on how to ultimately scale your gym. Maggie and I sat down and we realized that we had no freedom, we had no time, and we didn't have the ability to control our schedule. We were chained to both my job that I had nine to five and the gym that we had. She was also bartending, pregnant, and working in the gym, and we were just running ourselves into the ground. After the event, on the flight back from the event, we legit looked at our end date of when the baby was due and reverse engineered every single data point that we needed so that we created an action plan so every day we woke up and knew exactly what we needed to do. And I wanna walk you through that right now. So here's what we figured out. At the time, I believe that we only had two part-time coaches, myself, my wife, and then two part-time coaches that would help with the classes. I was working in a nine to five, my wife was working in as a bartender, and we need to figure out a way to get her out of being a bartender and be able to scale our team so that by the time our second baby was born, we didn't have to be there, which meant that we needed enough members, enough revenue, enough profit, enough team members and everything to be able to step out and not have to worry about it. So we wanted to build the team, this dream team, so we didn't have to be in the gym all the time. So how do we do that? The first thing that I did was I looked at the revenue that I needed to make. So I can't remember what I was making in August. Um, it wasn't insane reoccurring revenue, but looking at where our expenses were and then projecting out what we thought our payroll was gonna be, I think I had set it to where I needed my reoccurring EFT money to be in that 38 to $40,000 a month range, which would cover all of our expenses plus pay us. And so that was what we deemed our freedom number. So let's just say it was 40,000. I think it was less, I think it was like 35,000, but $40,000 in reoccurring revenue. So how do we get there? Well, I took my average monthly revenue or average client value that I got every single month from my clients and I just reverse engineered, cool, I need to add X amount of clients. And the goal for us was actually 200, I think it was like 215. Cool, we have X amount of clients now, we need to add X amount of clients. Let's look at our previous historical data on how many EFTs we're adding every single month and then let's extrapolate that over the course of time. So knowing my revenue number that I needed to get to, my freedom number, I then worked backwards. If I know that, the next thing is I need X amount of reoccurring members. And if I need another 100 reoccurring members, I know that if I sign up at my conversion percentage, I know that if I sign up 160 trial members, challengers, that I'm going to back end to 100 EFT members knowing my conversion metrics with a little bit of padding just in case because I wasn't doing it, my team wasn't quite as good, and I knew that. 
Now, the key now, let's say I need 160 trial members and I'll convert them into 100 EFT members. The next step is take that 160 trial members, which are closes, and then now it's like, cool, how many appointments do I need to get scheduled? And let's say our closing percentage is, just to be easy, 50%. It was higher, but let's say 50%. That means that over the course of the next five to six months, I would need 320 people to show up so that my team could sell them. So I need 320 shows, but then the next step is how many do I need to get scheduled? How many appointments do I need to book? Because not everybody shows. So then it's like, okay, well, I need to figure that out. So then it's cool. My show rate, let's say is 50%. So 320 times two is 640. I need 640 appointments over the next six months, meaning I need over hundred appointments that are scheduled every single month for the next six months in order to reach my goal. Then I back into what's my percentage of leads that schedule. So if let's say 50% of my lead schedule takes 640 times two, I need 1200 80 leads over the next six months in order to hit my goal. Cool. Let's say I have 1,280 leads. What's my average cost per lead? Let's say my average cost per lead is $10. So I needed to spend $12,800 in order to get those leads. But there's a piece to this. I'm more conservative than most people are. I added in a padding where I added 50% to my lead costs, knowing the fluctuations of Facebook and Instagram and everything else, and realizing that most likely the costs are going to go up. So I added that in. So now my cost went up. So now instead of $10 per lead, I budgeted that I would need to spend in order to get 1,280 leads, I'd have to spend roughly $19,000 over the course of six months, where if you do the back end math, it's a little over $3,000 a month, which means if I back into it, it's a little over $100 per day. So I know that if I spend $100 per day and I'm consistently making new creative once a week, I'm making sure my copy's good and I'm consistently running my ads, then I'm going to be able to back end to over 1,200 leads over the course of the six months. I'm going to be able to get 50% of those people to show. I know of those people that show, I'm going to be able to close 50%. And of those people, I'm going to be able to convert X percentage. So that was the revenue driving piece that I reverse engineered. So you just start from where you want to go, look at your current metrics, and then reverse engineer to get there. Then the next step was team, because I couldn't do all the work. My wife couldn't do all the work. We were going to be out. So we had to reverse engineer all the positions that we would need, but we got to take it a step further because you got to think of hiring and creating a dream team, just like Legion. You have to think, I have to have a certain amount of leads. I have to get those leads to schedule. I have to get those leads to show. I then have to get those leads to sign up but then I also have to keep those people. And so when you're thinking about building a team, think of it in the sense of lead generation. So we reverse engineer, cool, we're gonna need a manager. So a manager of the facility or like an office administrative assistant. So someone who could manage the paperwork, day-to-day -day aspects and ensure that the experience for the clients is going really well. We needed a head coach, so like a director of training. And we needed someone who was gonna do the programming, manage the coaches, do continuing education for them, manage the scheduling, all that stuff. Then we needed enough coaches to cover the classes that we were going to offer or need. Looking at that, I think we reverse engineered where we are going to need to add a total of about five to seven team members based on where we're at. We would need a salesperson, we'd need a lead nurturer, all that stuff. The only thing I was not going to give up was advertising. I was going to consistently run the marketing because it was my money and I was the best at it in the business. So I wasn't going to outsource that. With that said, it's not so clear cut and easy to do when you think about adding, let's say, five new team members because you're not going to hire rock stars right away. So I built a padding in of like, cool, I'm probably going to have to hire 10 people to get to five because within that, I'm going to cut people and I'm going to fire people and let them go because it's just not going to work out. But I want to add a little padding in there and I'm probably going to try to give probably more like 12 to 15 people a chance and then really narrow it down to where I get eagles at each of those positions. Then the next piece is, let's say I want to hire 15 people. How many interviews do I need to take in order to actually find those people? On average, they say you should take 10 interviews. So that means I'd have to have 150 interviews to find those people in those positions. If you're just doing 10 interviews, that's a lot of interviews. So now it's just like, cool, now I have to figure out my time and what I'm going to be doing. But then the next piece is, how do I go out and actually get those interviews set up? What's my show rate, which I didn't know, so I just guessed, and I guessed it was going to be like 60 or 70%. And then you just reverse engineer from there. Cool. That means I need to get X amount of resumes. Let's say I need 200 resumes to be able to back end to five or 15 people that I hire. Then from there, it's the onboarding process. What does the onboarding process look like for those 15 people that I bring on? Not all of them at the same time. It was all over the course of the six months following. Thinking through that helped me create a plan so that every day I woke up, I knew exactly what I was going to do, what I needed to do that day, and what metrics I needed to hit on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and six month basis in order to make sure that we were on track towards our goal. So this gave me a clear end game result that I wanted and allowed me to understand in the minute micro elements of the day to day basis to know exactly what I'm doing in order to be successful. And then what we did was, as soon as we had that, we split roles. My wife focused on one aspect
aspect of the business, I focused on the other and we went at it. What's absolutely insane to this day, and it's just a testament to hard work, having a very clear plan and absolutely crushing it, we beat our projections and got to over 250 members in that time frame, and we got there earlier. So by the second week in January, we had budgeted or planned for the end of January. By the second week of January, we had those members, we were able to step aside, and we no longer actually needed to be in our business at all. Really by, I would say, October of 2017, moving forward, I never coached another class. And so our team coached them, we had full teams available. All my time and my wife's time was spent on pouring into our clients and our team to help them grow and be able to serve our clients to the best of their ability. So if you're in a position and you're like, man, I really wanna grow, I really wanna do this, I just don't know how, the first step is to realize where do I wanna go? How much money do I need to make? And be realistic with yourself. Understand that most likely your benchmarks that you're trying to hit if you own a brick and mortar gym is 30% of your revenue should be going to payroll at most, 40% should be going to other expenses, and your goal is 30% net profit margins. That does not include like your profit is not your pay. Your pay should still be in payroll. That profit should be distributions to you. So back ending into those numbers, where do you want to go? How much do you want to make? And then just reverse engineer every aspect of your business from your lead generation, your lead nurture, your sales, your fulfillment, your churn, et cetera. And so if you keep those top of mind and understand that, then you can reverse engineer and then put the pieces in place every single day and take massive action on that so that you can grow and scale your business. If you guys find this valuable and you want to learn more about how we're able to do this, just drop a comment down below. I can walk you through some specific examples and give you like a whiteboard and walk through that. Just let me know if you like this. And if you have specific questions about your own facility and what your current numbers are, I can help you walk through this in a YouTube video. Either way, appreciate your time and attention. If you like this stuff and you're a gym owner, a health club owner, and you want to learn more about growing your business, we have a ton of content on our channel. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, check us out. But ultimately, at the end of the day, our goal here at Gym Launch is to help gym owners reach more people, change more lives, and stack more cash. So as always, gym owners rule, and I'll see you on the next video.